Hi, my name is Kate Eggleston. I'm going to be your art teacher today. Welcome to the Mammoth Museum's virtual summer camp art class. Today's project is inspired by artist Georgia O'Keeffe's paintings. Georgia O'Keeffe was an American painter. She was known for her paintings of enlarged flowers, New York skyscrapers, and New Mexico landscapes. Today we will be using watercolor pencils to recreate our own version of O'Keeffe's famous painting titled Cow's Skull, Red, White, and Blue. We will complete this project in two parts. First is the skull and second is the background. Once they are both dry, we can combine both pieces with these foam bits to create a 3D effect on the final project. One piece of paper, one pre-cut out cow skull stencil, your watercolor pencils, a dish or a cup for water, a watercolor brush or a paintbrush, three tiny pieces of foam, and a glue stick. Okay, so first things first, we're going to work on the background. Now, the background of cow's skull, red, white, and blue, is just that. Red, white, and blue, and there actually is some black in there too. So we're going to need our black pencil, the two blue pencils, and the red one. I'm going to set the rest aside because we don't need them just now. And I'm going to put the glue and the other materials to the side for the moment as well. So in the original painting, there are two red stripes on either side. The skull goes in the center just like this. And then on either side of the skull, there's kind of blue looking curtains kind of coming down. So we're going to start with the red. So first things first, we're going to establish two red bars on either side of the paper. Okay, so this will be red and this will be red. They don't have to be perfect in the painting. They're definitely not straight. Um, they're not perfect so that it's okay not to be exact. The other thing is in the center, there is a black stripe that goes down the middle. So I'm going to establish that black stripe that goes down the center, so then this will get colored black as well. Now the blue is a little tricky because it's kind of a combination of this light blue and this uh, purpley violet blue. So we're going to use a couple of different colors here, all right? So I'm going to start with the lighter blue because light going light, you can always go darker if you need to. So the back of this is blue and the way that these kind of curtain-like parts are set up is that the direction of the paint is kind of moving in towards the center from an angle, so we're gonna do it that way too. So, you can start by just drawing or coloring in just one little piece. I'm going to do the same on this side. Maybe just sketching out where I'm going to go. And this isn't precise. We just need to get the idea. Once we add water to this, it's going to make it a lot easier to blend it all in together. Okay, so then there tends to be kind of swaths of color and a little bit of light so I'm gonna leave a little bit blank just so I can 
go back and add in more if I need to, but it doesn't have to be crazy. So we're just going to add a little bit here, going all the way down, okay, kind of looks like a feather going out to the sides. some white space so that way we have plenty of room to blend. Okay, now I'm going to go back in with my darker blue. Okay, there's also a violet in there. This one is the blue that I grabbed extra. We want to make it a little bit darker towards the center because it gets darker here and then as it goes away from that center line it gets a little bit lighter. So I'm going to go in and add a little bit of darker blue. Just layer it over top. Remember with the watercolor pencil, you are directly coloring with the dry watercolor pigments. So the more you add, the darker the paint is going to be in those sections. If your pencil is dull, just ask someone to sharpen it for you. These watercolor pencils sharpen just like regular pencils, which is pretty great. So I'm going to do the same over here. And I'm a righty, so I need to just twist my paper a little bit. looking pretty good. So I'm just adding a little bit of blue here, darker blue, so that way we can get a little bit more depth in this painting. I think I might need to go back and add a little bit more light over here, make sure it's even on both sides as best I can. There we go. The great thing is that once we add the water, it's all going to look very smooth. And there you go. Okay, now let's tackle the interior blue pieces that are kind of curtain-like. Now we colored them in a way that was kind of on an angle that helps with the movement that's already in the original piece. So by coloring in that direction already, it'll actually help us to blend all of these colors together. So again, with your watercolor pencils, you want to just get just a little bit of water on your brush, not a ton can always get more. Start here and work outwards. Just make sure that you're not getting the black stripe in the center too wet as you go in because then that will bleed into your piece. So what you're going to do is very carefully take your brush and just swipe it across starting at the base here and working your way out. That will blend that lighter blue and that darker blue together, the pigment will get wet and then it will start to mix together really nicely. That'll provide a little bit of depth into the piece. The original piece looks like it has very deep, deep crevices in the blue part, so we're going to try to recreate that a little bit. Get a little bit of water as you need it. painting outwards from the center. And blending it as we go. If you feel like it isn't quite dark enough and you would like a little extra blue, while the paper is damp, you can go back and take your blue and you can very gently sketch in a little bit of extra blue, okay, 
and get just a little bit of water on your brush. And then you can just paint right over that and blend that back in as well. So they'll add a little bit more darkness to the parts that you were working on. For the skull, I've chosen black, brown, and yellow. What we're going to do is we're going to add shadow to give the skull depth and make it a little bit 3D to give it a pop. So on the original, the cow skull had straight horns. I curved these ones because why not? Gives it a little bit more fun. So what we're going to do is draw a line down the center of the skull first. That's kind of where the bones connect the way down the center and then we were going to establish where these horns connect to the skull itself so do a little bit of a line curved right here okay and you can make it kind of sketchy it doesn't have to be a perfect little line now there is a depression at the top of the cow so if you imagine the cow has skin and flesh the eyes are about here so above there's a little bit of a depression into the skull and the skin and then the bones here protrude where the eyes are. So the eyes are about here and you can do that by just creating little indentations because again it's just a bone, no longer skin and flesh. So we're just kind of emphasizing where the darker spots of the shape would be. And the reason why I'm going very light right now is A, it's easier to erase if I really need to, and B, honestly, you can always just go darker. So I might add a little bit more darkness after I get those spaces established. So we have where the horns attach to the skull, the little indentations up here are where uh, just above the brow where the eyes are, the eyes are about here. Now, I want to emphasize a little bit of this cracking down the center of the skull, so you just add a little bit of a uh, press down with this black pencil. Now, on the original piece of Georgia O'Keeffe, she has kind of parts of the skull have broken away. It's probably been something she found in the desert, which a lot of times a lot of her uh, subject matter was bones and things found in the desert, which was pretty fantastic. So she had the entire desert as her playground. So what I'm doing now is I'm adding kind of jaggedy pieces here to kind of break the skull up. I'm going to put a little bit of shading in here to establish some depth. Okay. Let's try to reserve drawing lines for where we really need dark space. Otherwise, let's just use shading, which is just the coloring back and forth, to establish depth because if we draw too many lines, it'll end up looking a little bit cartoony and we don't want that. So because we do not have a real cow skull in front of us, we're going to use our imaginations a little bit. So I'm just creating these dark patches by coloring it in or shading to kind of give the impression that there are broken pieces here and there's some depth to the skull going in. Okay, so I'm gonna add a little bit more cragging here, a little bit more shading just about here. Then there was a piece of the skull at the base near the nose that had a hole through it. And then I'm gonna shade that in just a little bit so now we have kind of this spooky looking cow skull, which is pretty fantastic. Beyond skulls, there were a couple of cow skulls that George O'Keefe did paint. She also painted 
quite a lot of flowers. She did a lot of landscapes. Um, I think the flowers are probably what people know about her the most, or known her for about the most. Um, she also did a lot of landscapes and um, views from airplanes, which were pretty fantastic. Okay, so this is looking pretty creepy. I like this, looking pretty good. So let's add a little bit more detail up here. I mean, the skull is pretty bleached from being in the sun, but I feel like if we add just a little bit more shadow and shading to it, it'll give it more of a 3D effect. So I'm just adding a little bit of shading. You can use your imagination as to where that might be. You can use your artistic license, as it were. Now, I have the brown and the yellow because the skull in the original painting is not all black and white. So maybe in some spots you can go back and add just a little bit of brown. It's gonna give it a little bit of color to kind of perk it up, make it look a little bit more, just a very light bit. Okay, and then I'm gonna go back with, oh, let me just add a little bit of brown up here too. And then I'm gonna go back and add a little bit of yellow as well. Okay, and you can use your artistic license to where you'd like to put that yellow. I think it'll give it a little bit more pop once it's on the red, white, and blue paper. Okay. Now we're going to paint the skull. We're gonna do it just the same as we did any other watercolor pencil project. We're gonna get just a little bit of water on our brush, make sure we wipe it on the edge of the cup to establish a point. Now for this one in particular, you do need a point because there's so many places in here that are very delicate and you don't wanna just slather the whole thing with water if you can avoid it. So the idea right now is that you're just going to trace over what you already shaded in and don't worry about the colors bleeding together it'll actually blend them fairly nicely so I'm just going to trace over the lines I already made and I don't have a lot of water if you notice I haven't gone back into the water dish I'm just doing a little bit don't need a ton okay so I'm going to start with these spots with the eyes on just kind of work my way down. I think I'm going to leave some of the darker spots to last so that way I can really use that dark black to emphasize the gaps in the skull here. Here we go. So you're just very delicately tracing what you already shaded in. rinse this off just a little bit because there were some yellow spots that I did color in and I really don't want those to get too muddy. I'm going to spread that around a little bit. Okay, and if you find some spots that are just not dark enough to your liking, go dark. Get some black and put it back in there. And just go for it. Okay, if you like the way the pencil markings are, you can always just leave it and not add water. Okay. Yeah, I really want the eyes to come out a little bit darker, so I'm going to add a little bit more black there. Okay, then we're going to let this dry. So both of my papers are dry, my skull and my painted background. If you found that it's been bubbling up a little bit, you can always put a couple of heavy books or heavy objects on it to lay it flat. Um, otherwise, you're ready to go. So these pieces of foam are going to go on the back of the skull glued, and then the whole thing will get glued onto this piece here, so that way the skull will have a 3D effect. So we're gonna take our glue stick and get that ready. I'm going to flip my skull over and I'm going to put three pieces of foam on. So one's going to go here and two on the horns. Now when you're applying the glue, I know usually the rule is just a little bit of glue will do. For this, don't be shy. 
You're going to put it on and squish it down. Don't feel shy about using the glue. You probably need more than you think. Put a big stripe there. Plus it always dries clear so it's no big deal. Give it a good squish. Okay. I'm going to do another stripe here. Wait till you see how cool this looks when it's done. It's these little accents and elements that really make a piece fun. Okay, I'm going to squish those again. Now here's the tricky part. Because you need to glue it here, I'm going to put, apply the glue to the foam on the back. Just hold it with your finger and do it as carefully as you can. Okay. Don't worry about making your finger sticky. Just go for it. Okay, we're going to apply a whole bunch of glue there. And then a bunch of glue here. Cool. Okay. Now, now we are all glued and ready to go. We're going to take our background. We're going to figure out where we want the skull to be. I'm going to put mine about the center. And then you're going to push it down right where that foam is. Give it a good squish. Just be gentle with your paper. Okay. And then when you let go, it puffs up. Isn't that fantastic? So now you have this floating 3D element to this Georgia O'Keeffe inspired painting.